Here's what Mary Douglas said about human nature. Mary Douglas says, here's how it works. Human beings understand the world around them by dividing it into binary categories. Okay? Let me give you an example. There are two kinds of things in the universe. All right? Exactly two kinds of things. There are things that belong on the floor and things that don't. Do you agree with that? Yeah. So, the lid to my coffee cup belongs on the table or on the cup or in the garbage or something. Does it belong on the floor? It does not. Is this floor clean right now? It is, relatively speaking. Is it clean now? It's not. Why not? Because there's garbage on the floor. What made it garbage? Because it doesn't belong there. This is important, right? This is super important. Think about what you just said. There's garbage on the floor. Was there garbage on the table? There was not. Same object, what happened? Went into the wrong category. Because there are two kinds of things in the universe. There's things that belong on the floor and things that don't. Douglas said this is how humans perceive the universe. We make categories about stuff. Right? And this insight is so powerful, so profound. Things that belong on the floor, things that don't, that's pretty straightforward. I think we all understand it. Douglas said this whole idea that we have about what is pure it's nothing to do with hygiene, nothing to do with bacteria. It's about matter being in the wrong place. If there are leaves lying on the grass outside your window, everything is fine. If those leaves blow into the window and land on the rug, your rug is now dirty. Right? Because that matter is in the wrong place. It's out of place. That is what purity is about. Right? So, things that belong on the floor and things that don't, that's easy. That's straightforward. What if we started making categories like things that are male and things that are female? Things that are alive and things that are dead. Now we start getting complicated, right? And generally speaking, in human societies, when you put on your ethnographer cap and you go off to a faraway place and live with an exotic group of people, where you see people transgressing boundaries, they have power. So the title of Douglas's most successful book in which she lays out all of these problems is Purity and Danger. Things that cross boundaries are dangerous to us. When they are within their boundaries, they make sense. They're pure. That desk was clean and so was the floor. Everything was in its place. One of those things left its place. The purity was spoiled. We don't consider that especially dangerous. We consider it a bit dirty. We want someone to clean it up. But imagine somebody that transgresses the borders about things like local and foreign, in the case of Toronto. Healthy and sick, living and dead, pregnant, not pregnant, human, non-human, male, female. These categories are especially scary to us. And so it is that in so many tribes on Earth, when you go and find who are the powerful people, like the, the medicine men, the shaman, the spirit communicators, they will often be people, for instance, who cross-dress. Women who wear men's clothes, men who wear women's clothes. Why? So that they can walk across that boundary more easily. Assume some power, some danger. Some of us have heard of the rites of passage. This is like our Anthro 101 thing. Armin van Gennep talks about how every society has a rite of passage, ways of moving you from one category to the next. Think about that in terms of Mary Douglas. Let's say that we have two categories in the world. How about children versus adults? <laughs> Can't be both, right? Are there any adults in the room? Three of you, great. <laughs> right. <laughs> this is fantastic. So, you can't be both at the same time, and it's very dangerous to be neither, right? So, in so many cultures on Earth, when you want to change from being a child to an adult, you want to switch categories, because all human life is just a whole bunch of rooms, right? And you can be in one or the other, but walking down that corridor is very dangerous. 
So we create our rites of passage in order to safely move you from one category to the next. The theorist who sort of came up with this idea is named Armin van Gennep. Great guy. I think he and Douglas read very well together. And sure enough, he said, go to uh, a, a quinceañera, right? Hispanic families who have these great big sort of 15th birthday parties for girls. Because you're no longer a kid. Now you're an adult. And in order for you to safely become an adult, we have to have a big party. A bar mitzvah, right? A bat mitzvah. All sorts of cultures have these sort of traditions in which you come of age and in which we take you from that one category, we put you into the middle for a minute, and most societies have this, actually. A bizarro sort of liminal phase where you're in the dangerous in-between. You have to wear weird clothes. Sometimes you physically have to move over to somewhere else. And then we reintroduce you into your new status, and you're a completely different person. You're in the new box now, and you can't go back. 